الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وآله وصحبه أما بعد my dear brothers and sisters my dear children and grandchildren السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and عيد مبارك to all of you تقبل الله منا ومنكم may Allah accept from all of us inshallah and reward you abundantly in this life and in the hereafter my sermon today is just a short summary of what I talked about in the last five Fridays regarding fasting in Islam. This is something you heard before, but it is very important to remind you about it again and again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in 2.183, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. Oh, you who believe fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you that you may learn self-restraint. So by practicing self-restraint, we endeavor to ward off evil, fear Allah, and become righteous. In Islam, we have three types of compulsory fast, namely the fast of the lunar month of Ramadan, which comes 11 days earlier every year, or fasting to fulfill a vow, or fasting as a form of compensation for an error being done. Fasting is from dawn to sunset, no food, no drink, and no fulfillment of any sexual desire, also to refrain from vain speech and foul language. Fasting of Ramadan is an obligation on every sane, healthy Muslim, male or female, who has attained the puberty. It is one of the five pillars of Islam. The Muslim fast is not meant for self-torture, although it is stricter than other fasts. It also provides concessions for special circumstances. In 2016, Nobel Prize for Medicine was given to a Japanese researcher who proved that fasting is good for the body and prevents some diseases. But why did God ordain on us the fast of the month of Ramadan and not any other month? For example, why not Rabi'ul al-Awwal, the month in which the Prophet ﷺ was born immigrated from Mecca to Medina and died in the same month. Great events. Why not the month of Rajab? When the Prophet ﷺ went on a journey by night from Mecca to Jerusalem and ascended into heaven and the five daily prayers became compulsory on that night. Why not the month of Sha'ban when the Qibla changed from Jerusalem to Mecca? Allah says in 2185 شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون Ramadan is the month in which was sent down the Quran as guide to mankind, also clear signs for guidance and judgment between right and wrong. So every one of you who is present at his home during that month should spend it in fasting. But if anyone is ill or on a journey, the prescribed period should be made up by days later. God intends every facility for you. He does not want to put you to difficulties. He wants you to complete the prescribed period and to glorify him in that he has guided you and you may give thanks. So Allah commands us to fast Ramadan because the revelation of the Quran started in one of the last 10 nights of this holy month over 1400 years ago. 
a night described by Allah in 44.3 as Layla Mubaraka, a blessed night, and in 97.1 as Laylatul Qadr, the night of power, honor, and glory. Allah states that on this night, every year, angels led by Archangel Gabriel descend on our planet with so many blessings from our Lord. God says the night of power is better than a thousand months in blessings and reward and spiritual glory. Allah instructs us to study the Quran and act upon its moral law to live a good and a pure life to attain salvation in the hereafter. When Aisha, the wife of the Prophet وسلم, was asked about his character, she replied, He was a Quran walking on earth. He interpreted all the instructions in the Quran and implemented them and applied them. Allah says in 59.21, If you had sent down, if we had sent down this Quran on a mountain, you would have seen it humble and split apart for fear of Allah. Such are the similitudes which we offer people that they may reflect. لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشة الله وتلك الأمثال نضربها للناس لعلهم يتفكرون. There are two ideas associated in people's minds with a mountain. One is its height, and the other that it is rocky, stony, hard. Now comes the metaphor. The revelation of Allah is so sublime that even the highest mountains humble themselves before it. The revelation is so powerful and convincing that even the hard rock splits asunder under it. Will man then be so arrogant as to consider himself superior to it or so hard-hearted as not to be affected by its powerful message? The answer is no for unspoiled man. Yes, for man when degraded by sin to be the vilest of creatures. If we realize the spiritual significance of the fast, we shall look upon Ramadan not as a burden, but as a blessing and shall be duly grateful for the lead given to us in this matter. So what was the first revelation to the Prophet ﷺ? When Allah spoke to Moses, he said to him, Innani ana Allahu la ilaha illa ana fa'abudni wa aqmi salata li dhikri. I am God, there is no other God but me, so only serve me and establish regular prayers for my remembrance. And when Jesus delivered the message from his cradle, he said, And Allah commanded me to establish regular prayers and give to charity as long as I do live. And when the first revelation came down to Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the month of Ramadan, Allah said in 96, 1 to 5, اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم Read in the name of your Lord who created He created man from a leech-like clot of blood Read and your Lord is the most bountiful one who taught by the pen, taught man what he did not know. So the first command, which was revealed over 1400 years ago in the month of Ramadan, was to learn how to read and write to abolish illiteracy and eradicate ignorance. The Prophet Wasallam said, طلب العلم فريضة على كل مسلم ومسلمة. Seeking knowledge is an obligation on every Muslim male or female. Unfortunately, at least half of the Muslims worldwide are illiterate. 
Immediately following the creation of Adam, Allah taught him the names of everything. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا A privilege the angels did not have. Seeking knowledge and reflecting on Allah's creation to help ourselves and serve humanity should be the quest of every Muslim. Allah teaches us new knowledge at every given moment. During the high medieval period, the Islamic world was at its culture peak, supplying knowledge and ideas to Europe via Andalusia, Sicily, and the Crusader kingdoms in the Levant. It was the Islamic golden age. The Prophet wasallam was commanded to say in 2114, My Lord, increase me in knowledge. We should always pray for increase in our own knowledge, which can never at any given moment be complete. Constant effort is necessary to keep our knowledge square with the march of time. But we must remember that spiritual knowledge is far above any little cleverness in worldly affairs. I would like now to point out few etiquettes or manners uh, when we are celebrating Eid. I'm going to read a hadith, or maybe more than one hadith, women regarding women and children going out to attend Eid prayers. Our Sharia requires women and children to go out and attend Salatul Eid. This includes married, single, young, old, or menstruating women. So even women on their period should go out to attend the Eid prayer. Umm Atiyah reports, we were ordered to go out with the single and menstruating women to the two Eids in order to witness the good and the supplications of the Muslims. The menstruating women would be separate from the others. This is related by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Ibn Abbas says that the Prophet would take his wives and daughters to the two Eids. This is related by Ibn Majah and Al-Bayhaqi. Another uh, custom or tradition, prophetic tradition, which we should also emulate, uh, most of the people of knowledge are of the opinion that it is preferred for a person to go to the Salah by one route and then to return home through another route, regardless of whether he be the imam or a member of the congregation. <clears throat> uh, there's a hadith here on the days of Eid. The Prophet would take different routes. This is related by <clears throat> Al-Bukhari. Excuse me. Now, regarding uh, playing amusements, singing and eating on the days of Eid. Recreation, amusements and singing, if they stay within the moral bounds, are permissible on the days of Eid. Anas reports, when the Prophet ﷺ came to Medina, they had two days of sport and amusement. The Prophet said, Allah, the exalted, has exchanged these days for two days better than them the day of breaking the fast and the day of sacrifice. This is related by an nasai and Ibn Hibban with a Sahih chain. In Al-Bukhari, Aisha said, the messenger of Allah entered the house and I had two girls who were singing about the battle of Buath. The Prophet lied down on the bed and turned his face to the other direction. Abu Bakr entered and spoke harshly to me. Musical instruments of the Satan in the presence of the Messenger of Allah. The Messenger of Allah turned his face to him and said, leave them. When Abu Bakr became inattentive, I signaled to the girls to leave. It was the day of Eid and the Africans were performing with their shields and spears 
in the mosque of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were dancing, the African were dancing with their shields and their spears, celebrating the Eid as a form of entertainment. I asked him, or the Prophet asked, if I would like to watch them. I don't recall now. I replied in the affirmative. At this, the Prophet made me stand behind him and my cheek was against his. He was saying, carry on, O tribe of Arfada. He was encouraging them until I tired. The Prophet asked, is that enough for you? I replied, yes. So he said, leave then. Ibn Hajar writes in Fath al-Bari, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this is again Aisha related that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that they let the Jews of Medina know that our religion is spacious and has room for relaxation. And I have been sent with an easy and straight forward religion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us live through more Ramadans to come and empower us to fast, to read the Quran, to implement it and to be good Muslims inshallah. And remember in your prayers, your parents and those who are not well and those who are no longer with us and please pray for peace at our homes. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته